Hello, hello, it is me again. I know, you guys are still wondering why there's a Christmas tree in my house, but my husband told me it would take away his manhood if he had to strap the Christmas tree to my car while his truck is in the shop. You're not even recording. <laughs> yes. Give me the camera. Give me it. I have something to say. Tell him. That was rude. <laughs> oh. Okay, you guys. I just walked in the door. Literally, the door's still open. And Elijah's in the bathroom right here. <laughs> and it is time to get rid of this tree. I don't care what anybody says. So, your girl's about to just bah humbug and get this thing out of here. red-handed. Repeat, red-handed. I had to share this video with you because, okay, remember the last video how I was like, goodbye Christmas, Christmas is over, hello 2022? Well, Elijah came home and was not a big fan about Christmas being officially over, even though it was the 5th of January. So I had to go to a bit of extreme measures and take down the Christmas tree myself. Just though in the nick of time for me to spill all of the water out of the tree stand and for Elijah to come out of the bathroom and be just thoroughly sad. So once again, the Grinch. Hello, hello, it is me again. It's just me this time, just me. I would like to inform you though that I am officially out of quarantine, you guys, officially out of it. If you saw the last video, you are fully aware of the whole situation. Elijah and I, we had a big reunion this week and um, he's already off and on to other great things. So he's out of town and I don't know about you, but I'm normally pretty okay being home by myself. But last night, I was at dinner with my in-laws and we were talking about security systems, like home security, and I came home and was literally freaked out of my mind. So I basically was having dreams all night that kept waking me up and I was just like such restless sleep ever. Anyway, okay, tonight we're not talking about Christmas. We are not talking about my quarantine anymore. We are on to new exciting topics and Honestly, you guys, this is probably just the start of a conversation. I feel like I could talk about this and there'd be a million things I could say. I might ramble, who knows what will come out of this video, but I think we need to have a conversation about the things I wish I knew before I got married. Or maybe it's more so just what I've learned in the last year. We'll see where this goes, but basically, I don't know, you guys, people tell you all sorts of stuff before you get married, like, who even knows? I mean, you get all sorts of advice. And we, I feel like I was told over and over again, like, the first year is so hard, it's gonna be so difficult. And, I mean, the first six months, I thought those people were idiots or something. I'm like, surely, surely you weren't doing it right. And then we hit the six month mark, and I was like, oh, this, this is challenging, like, I think we need to figure a few things out before we keep going, you know? So anyway, we, I, obviously not the expert here. I'm not the marriage as expert. I have been married for one year and almost three months. Like that's nothing, okay? I'm, I'm an infant in the marriage realm. But, you know, I just wanna pass on the thoughts, the things that I maybe wish I knew or I learned slash learned in the first year. And I feel like this is the start of a conversation because honestly, your girls learned a lot 
So maybe the next one we'll do with Elijah and we'll see what he's learned in the first year of marriage. Okay, let's get into it. I actually wrote down a few of my thoughts. Yes, I came a bit prepared today um, because I feel like I could just ramble and I would just get us nowhere. So, okay, what I have learned, let me just start with this. This is kind of like point one. Point one is Elijah and I got to about um, all the way almost to the first year of marriage before I had this revelation. And what had happened is there was an evening that we were having just honestly quite a very honest, challenging conversation that you often have in your first year of marriage because you're it's a transition. And in any transition, I don't know about you, but there's things that feel hard. Like... I, I'm not one that's like, okay, I love exciting, fun things, but I also like consistency and sometimes change is really hard for me. So I don't know. I constantly feel in tension with my life, but so the transition and the change was a bit of a stretch, was a bit of a challenge in, in different ways. But, um, Elijah and I, one night were sitting outside having a conversation and it just got really real and honestly, like, just hard. And I, I literally was asking Elijah questions like, do you regret that you got married so young? Do you regret X, Y, Z? Are you having a hard time being married? Like, really just direct, really direct questions. And the conversation was really good because Elijah and I have set a foundation from the beginning of our marriage slash I feel like even relationship that if one of us has to have a hard conversation with the other person, we've kind of just have this normal thing that when the other person is approaching the conversation, they really approach it with kind of like, no matter what you say, whether how crazy it is, or maybe even how hurt I could be by what you've done or what you just said, it's the other person responds with seeking to understand and going, oh man, really acknowledging that that was a really hard thing that they just told you and it was hard for them to tell you it. So a lot of times we phrase these conversations with, I really want to talk, I need to talk to you about something. Like just kind of kind of setting up the conversation to be, this is kind of an important conversation. I've even said sometimes like, I wish I didn't have to tell you this, or this is, I'm having a really hard time bringing this up, but I, I really need to talk to you about this. Really setting the scene. So us asking each other those really hard questions, that's actually just really normal in our relationship. Like we ask each other really direct questions and say, I would rather know the absolute honest truth in all of you versus you ha feel like you have to hide parts of yourself because you're scared of how I will react or what I will say. So that's been the foundation. So me asking those hard questions, it doesn't feel scary. I think obviously you kind of sit on the edge of your seat anticipating the question, but there's a level of um, security I think I found in being married that whatever they say is something that you both have vowed to work through versus, you know, it's on the table and maybe you're willing to work through this with this person. Maybe you're not like you vowed, you are committed to this person for life. Like you are going to work through this. So it doesn't feel so high stakes. Obviously a lot of the things that we've had to work through in our first year have caused pain for one another, but we've, we've learned to process that and find healing and actually bring us closer and bond us even more. So, okay, that's kind of pre, I guess, pre-story, but we were sitting on, sitting outside having this conversation and I, um, I just remember leaving that conversation and being like, oh, this is hard. Like, I just feel like we can't get on the same page. Like we're just having a hard time, um, getting a groove of things like the, the you know, the last six months have been challenging. Like, I don't know if I have felt, um, like we're killing it. Like we're, we're soaring and this is just the best thing ever. Like it's the best thing ever, but it was feeling challenging. And I was processing with a mentor, kind of just the spot Elijah and I were with, were in. And she said to me, and this forever changed my perspective. And I think took 
all the pressure that I didn't even realize I was carrying off. And she said, Allie, you don't arrive on your wedding day, say your vows, and all of a sudden you are one. It's a becoming. You become one. You are becoming. And becoming implies that it's a process. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, we are going to forever and ever become closer and more one as we go on because it's a becoming. And so that took off all the pressure of like feeling like I had to have it all figured out and we needed to be like on the same page and like smooth running. I don't know what the right term is, but so that kind of like laid the foundation for me to feel like, ah, oh, I can like take a step back and we can just figure these things out. But we also had conversation during that time because it's so new. You both are coming into the marriage with what we call two different plates of food. Elijah gave this analogy the other night where he's like, on one person's plate, they have like a hamburger and a fruit salad, but maybe they also have like rotten tomatoes and a stinky blue cheese. And the other person has, who knows what, a lasagna and a ice cream dish and a side of rotten milk. Like you kind of get the picture. You both come with really great things and things that you've had tendencies in ways that you've worked out situations and solutions or you've come to face problems and you have these normalcies, but they're actually not gonna work for the other person. So you kind of realize that, oh, when I spin the plate this way or when I, when I go over here and grab this, every single time we do it that way, it just makes me sick to my stomach. It smells so bad, I cannot do that. We cannot do that. We need to figure out our, the way that we move and how we can navigate these situations so that we don't keep getting nasty, nasty stuff that keeps coming up. So, but we've had this conversation where we've just said, please have grace for me. I'm not going to be the expert right now. I, I'm learning. Can you have grace for me? And I have grace for you. And we also eventually came to that conclusion, you guys. And that was the whole becoming like that the whole learning the becoming thing did not happen until like almost a year, like 11 or 12 months. I mean, 12 months would be a year. So like 11 months or something into marriage. Like I didn't even have that revelation of just like, oh, let's just have grace for each other. Like we're just learning. This is a becoming until basically the, the first year concluded. And so I don't know, setting that precipice and setting that as our initial thing was huge, like having grace for each other because you both are learning, but also navigating, learning how to communicate what was and what was not okay was our biggest breakthrough, I feel like. Um, Elijah and I, you know, you come to a problem or an argument and you have ways that you have processed and solved problems and had arguments with people your whole life. Tendencies, things you're used to, things that have been norms in your home. And you come into a marriage and you then have to deal with this other person's stuff that they also thought were norms and things. They thought that blue cheese tasted so yummy and you're like, that smells disgusting. Like that's kind of the, the situation. So it took me a while to even find words for what I was not okay with, but um, there came this cycle that I noticed in our relationship where we would have an argument and Elijah would come to, you know, to the table when we're trying to solve something. And when he would get to a point where he couldn't find words anymore, he would just get up and be like, I need space. And it used to freak me out because I felt like he was saying, I don't want to solve this. I'm done. I'm disconnecting now. Eventually I learned that actually it is okay for him to need space. Like for me, I don't have a super hard time. I can verbally process and get my 
myself to a place where I know what's going on and I can communicate fast and clearly. Where Elijah like needs space to go and be alone and figure out what's going on, on inside so that he can come back and communicate. And so I learned to have peace in, in needing space from one another to solve a problem. But also in that was learning to have boundaries with each other in certain things that are not okay. And I still think I'm, I think, I still think we're learning even in this, like what is not okay and what we're okay with. And that goes across the board. That's from like the way you talk to me to the way you leave your dishes to the way you take care of your finances. And it's a two way street. We both are learning. It's that becoming one. And so we, there came a point though, with Lige where I noticed this tendency when we were having arguments that all of a sudden, this is just an example, like all of a sudden I would be accused or like name called like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. Or like, oh my gosh, you always. And I had to be, we had to get to a place where I finally understood like, oh, this is a cycle. When we get into an argument, this is what happens. Like it, it turns into a, you're crazy, da, 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 like almost like name calling. And I had to go away, process what I cannot stand about the way that we are trying to solve this problem. Come back and say, hey, I am not okay with getting to a place and trying to solve a problem where you start saying name calling or accusing if you are you feeling you're you're gonna get to that space i need you to ask for space like that that is not gonna work for me and you know there were times that that happened again even after i communicated that and you know what i did is we've we've learned to come back to the emotion that that the other person is feeling like Hey, what were you feeling? Were you feeling out of control? Were you feeling scared? Because calling me crazy is not going to work. So let's talk about what you're feeling. Like, what is it that's going on inside? And you know what I found in our arguments? Literally, even this morning, I did something so dumb. I woke up this morning and the first thing I did is I texted Elijah and I was like, oh my goodness, I, I was like looking through budget and I was like, oh my goodness, like why have you spent X amount of money on this amount of stuff in the last week? And I was, because the emotion inside of me was, I am like, feel out of control. I feel like I don't understand. I don't know what's going on in our bank account. And when I looked, I feel really, you know, I feel surprised by the things that have been spent in the last week. And I went to, Oh my gosh, Elijah, like are you, you're you're reckless. I mean, I, I didn't say that, but I was saying I was saying things like where is this and why did this and da 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 and stating stating the facts, but they were coming across really harsh and I we left it at that and Elijah, this is all over text message too. Like this is how ridiculous this conversation was at like 5 this morning, 6 o'clock this morning. Like it was ridiculous. And I immediately knew, like I was like I should not be texting. He's gone on a, a, away with some guys this weekend. They're having a fun time. I immediately was like, what am I doing? But my emotion like overtook me and I just was like, blah, 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 blah. and that goes both ways. That's happened w with Elijah to me and me to Elijah. And in this moment, Elijah goes, Hey, I'm actually done talking to you about this right now. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I just could not shake it. And hours went by and I went to work and I eventually texted Elijah and was like, Hey, can you just chat for two minutes? Like, and he's like, sure. So I called him and I just said, Hey, I am, I am so sorry for texting you before even saying good morning. How are you? And freaking out and talking to you that way and accusing you of being reckless or whatever. And his response was, that's okay. I'm, I'm also sorry for the way that I responded. And I just don't want to, I don't want you to feel X, Y, Z. I want you to feel secure. I want you to feel safe. I don't want, and 
what I've realized is when the other person can own whatever part they had in the problem, if they can own their thing, which maybe I didn't cause the problem, but the way I responded or the way I brought it up or whatever your small part in the thing is, to own it and go, hey, I'm not okay with that. I'm so sorry by the way I responded. It is like, it's like contagious. Like the other person, no matter which way it goes, is quick to be like, man, I'm so sorry too. And it just brings, it just brings connection again. It brings, um, I don't know, it just bonds you together again. And so, I don't know, over the year, I've learned that, wow, I've learned so many things. I've learned boundaries in the way that you communicate to each other are, are good. I don't, there's, I'm like, there's endless things that I have realized I'm not okay with and we both are not okay with, you know? And one of those huge things was control. Like I hate to feel controlled by Elijah and vice versa. Like he hates to feel controlled by me. So learning to like, I don't know, come and go with that. You know, how do you, how are you married? How do you make decisions together? How do you have a voice in what this person does, but don't control them? That, that's been an interesting like tug of war between us. But okay, last thing I want to end with is this is like a whole other conversation, but kind of in that control thing is third, this will be the third and final thing for this conversation. We can have more of these kinds of conversations in the future. Third and final thing for today, folks, is so there came a point also within that after the six month mark when I was feeling so down and so annoyed with Elijah like all the time and I was feeling like I don't know I I don't know what the emotion was that I was feeling but I was just feeling like not fulfilled in life basically and was just like why I don't even care about your dreams anymore like yeah I, I'm so glad you got another job or you did this. I just, I started to lose like sympathy or excitement for Elijah. And I, it just was like ruining our connection. I was feeling like he wasn't prioritizing me and it was just rough. And eventually I talked to a therapist. This is like a much longer story, but basically I talked to a therapist and she said, Hmm, long story short. She said, Hmm, Allie, it sounds like you are going to Elijah for a stamp of approval when you actually need to be going to Elijah for a stamp of support. He's not going to understand everything you want to do. He's not going to understand why you might want to go to law school one day. And it's okay if he never understands. You just need him to support you. You don't need him to say, yes, you can do that or no, you can't do that. Obviously, there's logistics and logistical things that you'd have to figure out with certain decisions that you make in life. But your spouse is not there to tell you, yes, you can do something and no, you can't do something. They are there to support you in your dreams. And that goes both ways. And to me, that was like one of the biggest revelations that I had in our whole marriage because I, I found myself always going to Elijah for like, hey, what do you think about this? Underlyingly, I was kind of like asking him like, what do you say? Do you like this idea or do you not like this idea? Can I do it? Can I not do it? And so... Yeah, just was huge encouragement for me. Anyway, you guys, well, okay, that was that. I hope that you enjoyed that video. We'll do this again. Maybe we'll bring Elijah next time, see what he has to say about marriage, you know? Last thing I forgot to say, let me know in the comments what else you'd like for us to talk about, what other topics or videos you'd like to hear or see from me and Elijah. See you guys next time.